Hello. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Woo. Good evening. Welcome to the stream. Is everything yes. good? Everyone can hear everything? James, do you have the stream open? Do I sound good? Do you sound good? I do have the stream open. Let me Unmute turn the for volume a sec. On. Unmute for a sec. Make sure everybody hears us. They can see what we're saying regardless because of yes. the power of captioning. And I can hear us on the stream as nice. well. It is, it's weird because it's in the past. I'm listening to us in the past right now. Time is weird, James. But Time hey, is weird. that's another conversation. That's right. <laughs> and a longer one, probably. Um, yes. Let's say hello. Hi, who are you? Who are you on this Vihander channel, James Hey, uh, that's, a, that's a great question, Rudy. I am James and Jacasso. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And uh, I am uh, the GM of the uh, Zweihander live stream that we are about to see. And I mm. also um, uh, wrote, had a hand in writing the adventure that we are going to be playing through for the Zweihander uh, starter kit. Um, who who are you on oh, this match? Who am I? Oh, who are you? I'm, uh, I'm Rudy Basso, uh, longtime friend of James Jacasso, college friends if, at that. That's right. Met in college. Um, mm -hmm. I'm playing in this rpg stream that we've got going on here today as uh one of the starter pre-made characters from the adventure that you have written that you just uh referred to so i assume that we probably have people who have never heard of zweihander or, or, or are unfamiliar with zweihander i'd say because this is the starter set stream this is the core audience of the people that the the starter set is for so let me ask you then, James, co-author of the starter set, if you had to give an elevator pitch for Zweihander, the tabletop role-playing game, what would it be? So Zweihander, the tabletop role-playing game, is a grim and perilous role-playing game set in a fantasy medieval setting, um, and it's got horror vibes to mm. it. It's, it's definitely like horror role-playing uh monsters are there magic is powerful but it's scary Ooh. i would say if you know if your dungeons and dragons game is lord of the rings mm -hmm. then zweihander is like the witcher oh. right it's a little darker a sure. little more adult a little more moody a little more gritty and grim i think that's a really good comparison um so tell me a little bit about the rules of zweihander and we'll get into this during the stream of course you'll be explaining to the game as we go but I think of, well, well uh, with my familiarity of Zoolander, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a very layered game, I would say. I think there's a lot of really neat systems within it to make you, uh, it, there's a lot there. I mean, do you have the core rule book in front of you? Right I do now? have you just the, the show core rule book in front of me. Now, keep in mind, right, this is not just your player sure. handbook. Yes. This is your your GM's guide and your monster One manual. One book. So there you go. One book. Yeah. So let yeah. me ask it's, you then, when you were making this starter set with Daniel D. Fox, right? It's the, the two of you were the co-authors? Correct. Yes. Yeah, creator of Zweihander, yes, Daniel D. Fox. Yes, the creator. So what was your approach taking that game and in in, in turning it into a starter set? Yeah, so Daniel definitely had a vision for what he wanted the starter set to be, right? And it's mm -hmm. coming in a box, um, and, you know, the box comes with dice and character folios, and uh, it's got uh, tokens that you can use, all kinds of stuff like that, right? But um, his vision was like, can we make something that is going to be a fun, uh, you know, four-session game that will get people into it 
uh, very quickly. You'll be able to learn the rules. You'll have some fun. It'll be like a full, complete adventure in that experience. And it will give you a taste of what Zweihander can do. And he actually said, you know, there's this village called Swansea Mm. that could have some strange happenings in it. And he described this village that is spread out across a river, right? So it's on either side of this river, uh, you know, an east and west neighborhood in either Mm. shore um, and said, you know, what if there were these different factions in in, involved? And I don't want to get too into it because Rudy is a player and because you all might be players or or, or don't want to spoil the surprise, but that was uh, a big part of the idea was like, how do we get horror and intrigue in this little village of mm-hmm. Swansea? And then uh, uh, he and I, and uh, actually a, a gentleman by the name of Kyle Latino, who uh, did all the maps, um, you know, we sat around and we talked about it for a little bit. And I, one of the big questions was like, well, Kyle, what do you want to draw? Right. Like, <laughs> What sort of maps do sure. you want to draw? And that helped guide the adventure too. Um, so it was really thinking about how can we do that and how can we showcase each part of the system? Like you said, it's a very layered system. And yeah, there's rules for combat and magic, but there's also rules in Zweihander for chases and yes. social interaction, yes. right? Those things can get just as deep as combat and, and casting magic can. And so we wanted to be able to showcase those in a fun way for people. And I think you'll see some of that showcased today. That's right. Well, James, I'm not the only person playing in our game today, and they'll introduce themselves as we start the the session proper, but why don't you tell me, who are these people? How do you know them, and what do you think of them? Great. Well, these are all people that I have uh, played games with before or or have had the pleasure of meeting, so um, in addition to your wonderful self, um, we're playing with uh, TK Johnson. They are a writer and a streamer in the space they've been uh on wizards of the coast channel they've been on this vihander channel before they work for roll 20 full-time um they are just a, a joy to stream with and actually you and i streamed with tk we did uh, for 40 episodes 40 of the stream. episodes yeah so um a great to be back with tk uh here with us and then uh we also have uh diana d'amico who is uh, an incredible streamer, only have uh, worked with her once, but uh, this was a really fun thing to be able to bring her on. And if you know Die Hard Dice, Diana works full-time for Die Hard Dice, um, which is a a pretty cool, great dice company that is out there. And uh, Sean Banerjee, uh, and they are uh, just a, a... person who podcasts who does editing in the space um they've organized conventions they have a lot to do with dragon con down in atlanta um sean has organized fundraisers uh through streaming uh and so it was a great chance to be able to bring all these people together um to play together and like sean and diana knew each other you and tk knew each other everybody knew me and so it was a great chance to to bring those people together and also you know just make some magic and uh share this and i think one of the things that was really attractive to me was that sean and diana don't really have any experience with Hander. Hmm. so it was a great way to be like here's how the starter set works yes um, and and we're able to show that off which is great uh shout out to sean in chat hello sean and also kyle latino Kyle, these maps, I love them. I gotta say, oh yes, fantastic! Absolutely. Lots of detail, Hello. lots of diversity within the city itself. Like not every building looks the same. I think it's fantastic. Really, really great work. So let's stop talking, James. <laughs> but okay. also let's start talking in a different Ooh. form. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, James and I will be back. We're gonna run the first session now of the Zweihander starter set, which will be available on Kickstarter next week. You can go and put your name on the list to get updates on it by going to Kickstarter.zweihander.game. Just head there right now, and you'll be able to put your name on the list. So uh, that's it from us. We'll be back at the end of the session to kind of reconvene and summarize what happened and maybe chat about what's next for us. I'm excited. I don't know. It's going to be a mystery. But until then, uh, please sit back and enjoy Zweihander Starter Kit. Bye. Uh, Hey, everybody. My name is James Intracasso. 
Uh, welcome to the Zweihander Starter Kit stream. We are going to be playing the adventure in the Zweihander Starter Kit, The Secrets of Swansea. Ooh, Ooh. very exciting. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and uh, before we get started, we're just going to go around the table real quick and meet all of the other players. Rudy, why don't we start with you? Uh, tell us uh, who you are and what you do in the RPG world. Hi, my name is Rudy Basso. Um, you can follow me online at Rudy Brasso. Basso, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm a writer slash voice actor slash streamer podcaster just like a whole big mess freelance life freelance life just a whole big mess can't can't peg me down with a title uh just um <laughs> doing all sorts of stuff uh, I do produce the 5e actual play podcast Dames and Dragons which Ooh. is a bunch of teenagers trying to save the world and that always ends up being good <laughs> So you can check that out mm -hmm. at demesanddragons.com. TK was on it, I believe, a while mm -hmm. back. So there you go. Yeah. Speaking of TK, TK, mm -hmm. who are you and what are you doing in the RPG world? I hope that when uh, this gets edited, we zoom in on my look of surprise and terror <laughs> when you said that I was on that par podcast because I <laughs> mm -hmm. forgot for a hot second. And then I remembered <laughs> that. I, I either played one of the character's dads or I played a, a a child detective named Almanac Gray, who is one of my favorite characters. Yes. That's awesome. Also, uh, uh, hello, I'm TK Johnson. Um, question, has your name always been James Intercasso? Uh, it has, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I a lot of people uh, say James and Chicasso, uh, Wait, including, uh, Rudy including Basso, friend of when fifteen I... years, <laughs> <laughs> uh, including when I went to Italy and uh, people told me that I was saying my own name wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. probably upsetting. Right. Um, almost mm -hmm. as upsetting as finding out that I've been saying your name wrong, which I can't tolerate. Uh, oh. Um, yeah, so TK Johnson, uh, I write spooky stories on the internet. I used to stream, but then I got burned the fuck out. Um, and now I work in the marketing department for Roll20, and that's a delightful time. All right. Diana, why don't you let the people know who you are and what you do in the world of tabletop role-playing games? Um, yeah, uh, I'm Diana D'Amico. I'm pretty sure I'm saying my last name right. Just like, <laughs> um... <laughs> But how will you know? I, I guess I have to go to Italy and let the old <laughs> Italian people tell me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I'm the partnership manager over at Die Hard Dice. Uh, I do a lot of tabletop crap kind of everywhere. Um, I, I'm the storyteller for a lot of Play Renegade stuff. And yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, I know you're you're ending that like it's not a lot of things that you do, but you do a lot of things, uh, and so I, awesome I to ended to keep from crying. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> uh, speaking of doing a lot of things, Sean, do you want to let people know who you are in the world of tabletop role playing games? I really thought you were going to go with speaking of crying. That's what I thought too. I was so sure. And I was oh, like, yeah. I shouldn't say anything. That's fair. I've tweeted about crying at work before. Yes, that's me. Uh, Who hey, hasn't everyone. in the tabletop industry? I mean, I don't tweet about it. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Sean Banerjee. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I'm a producer, designer, editor in the TTRPG space. Uh, I host some things. I play some things. Uh, I try to have fun, and I'm really awkward. That's it. That's that's me. That's all of me. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, this is excellent because tonight we are going to be playing the uh, Zweihander uh, starter kit adventure, like I had said earlier, and it all starts out on a boat. Um, so Zweihander, if you're just joining us or you don't really know what Zweihander is, it is a medieval fantasy horror. RPG, um, wherein uh, you play characters uh, who are fighting against corruption and the forces of chaos in the world, uh, and also uh, trying to uh, do good sometimes. Um, however, uh, unlike maybe some other typical fantasy role-playing games that you may have seen, um, there are definitely some 
shades of gray when it comes to morality and hard decisions sometimes that people need to make when they are coming across uh, various things they need to do to get their job done, adventuring, right? That sort of thing. Um, there is also, and I will let you all know this now, that this is a skill-based RPG, and it starts with a fortune pool. Mm -hmm. So we have four fortune points here that uh, every session will refresh. Now, you can use a fortune point to do things like um, re-roll a, a roll when uh, you have one. You can use it to uh, make a damage die into a six because you always roll d6 for damage dice. That's very exciting because when you roll a six, your die explodes and you get to roll another one and add that to your damage. Um, so these are important things to know because this pool of four you all get to spend mm -hmm. however when you spend one it flips over to a misfortune point which i then get to use to do the same thing for um you know foes uh and the forces of chaos as it were um and then when i use them they go away for the rest of the session and we don't get them back but i can add fortune to the pool for you all doing cool stuff um and i am also open to you uh saying james you should give us fortune because that thing that sean or rudy or tk or diana did was really cool um so uh that is there and that's sort of our first introduction to the rules and then we'll dive into more as they come up does that sound good yeah great um what, what's so, the scale of cool for like getting mm, like just so i know like, what the yeah, where's the bar here yeah, yeah. oh that's for? a great question so the the scale of cool is um laugh so hard that you come close to vomiting oh. um or or jaw dropping, like whoa! I can't believe that just happened. But it has to be a genuine jaw drop. It can't okay. be, can't be put on. And I will know if you're just okay. Putting it on so to get when you say it. that, are you saying like surprising or, or yeah. just yes? Okay, surprising <laughs> or or true in the truest sense of the word, awesome, right? Like you you are awed by what has happened. Hypothetically, what if our character was just really intensely gross in a way that that provided yeah. excellent story yeah yeah and... yeah, yeah, yeah is the yeah. vomit can the vomiting also be coming from <laughs> disgust as well as laughter? yeah sure yeah. i will say yeah but but maybe we limit that to one per session so we're not try constantly one trying to session? make it's like he hates me down. oh my god <laughs> no he hates me right, you got real <laughs> cheap real fast bud he's like rudy i'm gonna make edit everything <laughs> <laughs> we asked you for an allowance and you were like five dollars seems reasonable we're like yeah. okay and you're like all together you all get a dollar <laughs> that's how much it cost to go to a movie when i was a kid so. how much could a banana cost <laughs> uh so we start in a miserable misty chilly friday you are making your way down the river basque in late autumn um and you are headed towards the village of swansea um, Swansea is a sleepy little place um, that uh, can't be a village of more than 500 souls, but it is a crossroads um, for both this river and also like a literal road. Um, so a lot of people are coming and going. There's an inn there. Uh, there's a tavern. Uh, this has been a three-day trip for you. You're coming from uh, a, a nearby city. Um, and Master Hugo, who is this nervous, twitchy merchant, has hired all of you to help guard the cargo. So far, nothing interesting has happened. It's been rainy. It's been dreary. But the pay is decent. Um, you've been traveling together for three days, so you've had some time to get to know each other. So what I'd like to do is have each of you go around and introduce your character now to the others. Tell me one th like, you know, describe your appearance and one thing that the other people would have picked up on you after spending three days on a river barge with you with nothing to do but like talk and play cards to pass the time. Uh, so Rudy, would you like to begin? Yes. Okay. I am playing Ryle the Professor Tombs. I am a pugilist by profession. Uh, I am large and hulking in classic pugilist style. Everyone here knows that I am a champion because i wear my champion belt around my waist most of the time 
Like, maybe not when I'm sleeping sometimes, but usually always. <laughs> um, and I'm on my way to Swansea to continue my winning streak, for I am undefeated. Oh, all right. Looking for a contender. Contender and I'm onwards. I, I'm a traveling punching type, you might say. <laughs> sure, sure. That old archetype. Classic. <laughs> Classic. Tell <laughs> when fiction <laughs> began and everyone knew about the traveling punching type. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, TK, uh, tell us about your character. Um, I'll be playing Black Eden today, um, and I guess for the next three sessions that we're doing (laughs) um i'm not going to switch it up because i'm lazy um yeah black eden is a sort of darker brown skinned woman in her early 50s uh they use i would say appears presents as feminine presents as a woman uses they them like me um and keeps their hair it's like long and curly they keep it in this sort of um very loose bun with a stick in it etc uh there are some streaks of gray in the dark curls and they are a highwayman and they are not shy about it it's very much a um sort of a bonnie and clyde uh celebrity bandit sort of thing like ooh, you you recognize me from my posters of course you do uh the best thing about them being a bandit is not necessarily that they are just some common street brigand but they are a uh, professional blackmailer um and for many uh aristocrats it is the thrill of the chase of having had an encounter with black eden that really leads them to her um some people just can't help themselves and i think that what the crew will have gleaned over the last few days is that black eden hasn't necessarily fallen on hard times but they are not looking to return to wherever they came from they are looking to seek fortune elsewhere got it okay that's cool fuck the wrong dad (laughs) there you go another tale as old as time (laughs) god if i had a nickel right that old trope and that old trope they do have a nickel (laughs) uh diana who will you be playing uh yeah hello i'm i'm barbara sturgeon I'm I'm your resident barber surgeon. Uh, she's perhaps five foot two, five foot three, maybe. Uh, very very slender, with a little pot belly, and just a rat's nest of gray hair. <laughs> um, she's pretty open about her her business acumen and how she gets her customers but the one thing that you all would have picked up on is that she's very good on the upsell you come in for a quick trim you're getting an appendectomy (laughs) (laughs) that old joke again barbara sturgeon your barbara surgeon (laughs) i want to see the business cards (laughs) uh there's blood on them, but you can still read them a little bit. <laughs> Excellent. Amazing. They actually don't say anything because I can't read. <laughs> it's just a picture of a knife oh. and a clippers. It's just like... <laughs> it's just some like bloody face. hair taped onto them. <laughs> Smoke a work. You want to see examples? I don't have an Instagram. Just go look here. <laughs> I'm so sorry, James. <laughs> Incredible. Just, the idea of going to a surgeon who's like, now listen, I can't read. <laughs> but but I know what to do once I'm in there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I want to see the TikTok tutorial. <laughs> I got me- what you call a natural gift. <laughs> ah, born with it, yeah. Show me the bikini <laughs> wax that leads into the breasts. <laughs> Oh you can God. cut that out. Don't, don't. <laughs> but not really, oh right? <laughs> no, keep it. Yes. Right. I might use that as like a, a bundle package deal. If you're okay with it. 
it's a package package deal. <laughs> so, Sean, <laughs> would you like to tell us about your character? I'll turn my mic off. <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm uh, I'm Giles Vermont, and uh, I'm I'm a I'm a tough guy. You know, I'm a uh, a purveyor of fine goods. Some might some might say. Uh, I get past uh, the the the, um, the the local ordinances of what is and is not allowed over certain borders, um, but uh, yeah, I, I I took this gig on this ship because uh, my my last ride uh, sank to the bottom. But you you know you're not allowed to put holes in the bottom of boats. It's not a good way to sneak things on and off. But uh, yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> and I didn't know what voice I was going to do until I fell into this bad Nick Cage impression. So. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Honestly, if they didn't want us to break laws, they wouldn't have made them so easy to break. <laughs> this is what I. This is what the Vermont family's been saying all along. And and for the record, Barbara Sturgeon gave me this haircut and and this um, what did you call it? She said I didn't need that anymore anyway, so she took that too. That was great. <laughs> it was a great deal. I got a really good price for it too. She's, she's got those like butcher style diagrams of like where things are on the body. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you don't can't read them, but I like pictures, so it helps out. <laughs> out of character, I just got so hungry. Weird? Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah, the old butcher. You just want mm. Oh, Delicious. yeah, cows. Some liver. <laughs> um, so, other than this job, you've discovered one other connection that you all share. Each of you is a friend of. Anaya Dost, uh, who moved to Swansea a few years ago to become the village's constable. Uh, so some other things that you know about Anaya are that they are in their 30s, they default to kindness when dealing with other people, and they generally assume the best in others. Um, so all around great person. Uh, I'm going to ask each of you a question about your personal history now with Anya. Answer it however you like. No wrong answers. Okay, this is just oh, about you, you cool. building connections into the story. Cool. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You cool? I, yeah, I know. I already regret there are no wrong answers, but it's, <laughs> it's said and it's part of the starter set. Uh, so let's start... You know what? Let's let's go. I've been going uh, from Rudy to Sean. Let's go from Sean to Rudy this time. Uh, so, Sean, tell Let's me. Action. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Uh, so, Anya once helped you out of trouble. What was the trouble, and how did they save you? Oh yeah, um, Anya's great. Anya's Anya. Anya's great. Anya. Anya's great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was having an argument with my dad um, about whether or not I could take the boat out. And, um, you know, she treated that, that, uh, that whole situation with a lot of kindness. Her and my, her and my dad went out for a, for, a, for a, I understand, a nice dinner and maybe some post-dinner activities. But um, while she was <laughs> doing that, I, I, took the, I took the boat out. And um, anyway, I'm not allowed to talk to my dad anymore because um, that boat's gone. Uh, yeah, there we go. She's great. She's great. She's bailed me this out. Is, I boat. assume this is the same boat that you put holes in? You would think that, but it's a different boat, actually. You just can't keep track of boats. I'm not great with them. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see. Barbara. Yeah. You and Anya have a friendly rivalry. What was it over and who won? Uh, well, this was before she got into constabling, mm -hmm. co constabling, co what she's doing now. She and I went to uh, cosmetology school together, and we, uh, we we had a friendly competition to see who could do the most haircuts in a single afternoon. Uh, it's actually how I discovered my love of surgery. Um, I cut a little too close. And, uh, you know, it opened up a whole new world for me. So really, I, I owe Anya everything. If I hadn't scalped that guy, I, I don't know what I'd be doing now. Whoa. 
That's amazing. Okay, excellent. Uh, TK. I love the mental image of Barbara cutting, like, cutting around the ear, nicking the ear halfway off, and then just being like, I can fix it. <laughs> just like, stitching it back on. Yeah, okay. I saw, I saw, like, starburst, and it was like the clouds opened up, and a ray of sunshine came down on that screaming man and what was left of his ear. Oh, darling. <laughs> Opium's a hell of a drug. Um, <laughs> uh, Black Eden, mm -hmm. you share a hobby with Anya. What is it? A hobby with Anya. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I have a lot of hobbies. I think that the most likely hobby that we would share is scrapbooking. I have always um, loved keeping a ledger of my misadventures and i dare say that she has provided me with a lot of material mm. in which to do so she didn't care that i borrowed her diary pages but honestly if she tries to get between me and her father again it'll be a lot worse oh. A lot of, lot of dad drama. A lot of dad drama happening here. Only dad drama. <laughs> uh, Mom drama too, but poor thing. Anyway. Uh, the professor, um, you have an important item that you've been meaning to deliver to Anya. What is the item and who is it from? Back when I was first starting out <clears throat> as an amateur... I would get me head bashed in quite often. Those don't count on the record. I'm still undefeated. It was amateur fights. And before I rose to become the champion I was and am and will continue to be, uh, Anya helped train me. I went to her after those defeats. And it was her kindness and her insight into how to defeat my opponents that made me the man I am today. And so this championship belt that I wear around my waist, 23 to 24 hours a day, I want to give it to her as a token to show that I am oh. the greatest now there there ever was and there ever will be. And of course, I'll, I'll be having a new belt any moment. So this one, you know, she can have this one. I've, this one feels a little worn out at the point. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is a championship belt in Swansea, even though it's a village of 500 souls. I, it's a, it's a, there are two people game. there. They'll be fighting. And that's where I come in. <laughs> Well, there you go. There you go. Um, so, uh, so you're you're making your way down the river, and you can actually see through the morning mist the silhouette of Swansea ahead of you. Um, you're gonna be getting there at any moment. Um, when? Uh, let's see. We're gonna do one of our first skill tests. Oh, so also, James, I think we her. all deserve a fortune point for our awesome uh, way yeah. of, like, They're coming incredible. up with these backgrounds sure. with Anya on the spot. So mm -hmm. Yes, I will give, uh, add a fortune point to the pools. There are now five fortune points in the pool. Also, okay. I'm not sure that I like the way that you keep saying 500 souls. <laughs> <laughs> because not only does it imply that, like, it's not people. You didn't say people. Are we counting cows? Are we counting non-humans? Good if question. So, what on earth is going on with our census system? <laughs> uh, that is so very good question. So in Zweihander, there are non-human humanoids, um, such as uh, you know elves, dwarves, uh, and they gnomes, have souls. and and such. Although it is a, a pretty humanocentric thing. Uh, uh, so, for instance, all of you are humans, um, and they are mostly humans. They have souls. Um, okay. I I was not, perhaps foolishly and incorrectly, counting uh, cows and 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 livestock or pets. Look, a customer is a customer. <laughs> Those do have souls. Well, that's a theological discussion yeah. for another. Stream, well, I, I want to yeah, know. I, I want to know what the can intake is. So the can intake. This is not. It's my hand. This is James. Uh, is that <laughs> dogs have souls, but cats clearly soulless. Nice. Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> even if you own a cat, you know that that thing is is from the bowels of hell, and is just waiting to eat you. Just just sitting there waiting yeah. for you to and pass if I found on. It, like. I don't blame it. Look, 
If I was starving and I saw a dead cat, cat, I would eat that fucking cat. Oh. Yeah. That's fair play. That's respect that you won't get from a dog. (laughs) Well, that's fair. let's play this game. (laughs) So, yeah. But, no. So, 500 souls meaning 500 folks. Okay. Um, Okay. That that was my main question was, like, is is this a human world or... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, it's mostly mostly humans that you'll find. The occasional elf dwarf. But um, undead are not counted in the census. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh... (laughs) Right. So they, I mean, they would be counted, but your cats, cats and dogs are not counted. Oh, this feels, I don't like this. What? I don't like 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 the cats and dogs aren't counted in the census. But vampires are. That's absurd. Oh, I missed vampires. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So if there are vampires, they're like, can't come out it during the day and stuff. You know, they, your traditional, traditional they can't event. answer the door for the census yeah. takers. Exactly. So they don't That's the census. Oh, yeah. The census. yeah, exactly. They don't, do a poll. They don't yeah. have a voter card, a voter ID, yeah. even though they really should because they're racist. Now a ghoul. That's a whole other thing. Um, so, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our first skill test in Spyhander. So you have your uh, D100s, right, or or two D10 here. Um, and what I'd like you all to do is make an awareness test. Now, before you do that, go ahead, look on your sheet. The awareness skill should be on there, um, probably under perception. So in Zweihander, you have a bunch of uh, abilities, and then each ability has skills tied to it, similar to um, okay. the way some, like, D&D has, you know, your your main abilities, and then you have skills. The difference is, whenever you make a check in Spyhander, it al- is always related to one of the skills here. Okay. I will show um, a picture of what? a character sheet at this moment. Yeah, oh, I got I got a little checky mark. I got a little yeah. checky mark. What does that mean? Um, so a check mark means that you are trained in it, which mm-hmm. means, so what is your perception uh, total? Which which one which one do I know is the perception total? Is that the big number in the circle? Yes, that's the big okay, number. Okay, so fifty. So fifty, and if you have a check, that means you get another ten percent when okay. you use that skill. So total, you would have a sixty percent chance, a sixty percent base chance to succeed. Um, okay. Yeah. And we want to roll below that number yes so you want to roll below that number if you roll above or below that number and you get double so like if you got 66 or 33 or 22 let me know because that also indicates a critical success or a critical failure do we 106 (laughs) wow i don't think that's possible i got the two zeros what's the two zeros mean so you got Was a ten. Zero. Oh, so, that's, so you rolled a six. You rolled a six. So that's I got your... a zero. Oh, I got a six. Yeah, it means your it means your tens place is zero, right? Oh, so like, I'm so that's how you get one through nine, basically. Oh, you roll the, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm a fucking ding dong. Do we? Okay. <laughs> Look, this is an eternal TTRPG debate. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, edit, edit in me knowing math. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know that editing can do that, my friend, TK. <laughs> um, I think no, this is good. Person. Yeah. James, do we need to care about bonus advance at all? And any check marks we might have in that area? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, tell so- me. <laughs> tell us all, James. Tell us. James. <laughs> what is information? So... If you have uh, so if you have a check mark right like you you have a circle filled out under bonus advance is what you're saying yeah so under or the uh, major skill or perception. bonus advance I have two check marks oh gotcha so what that means is uh, sometimes you you use a bonus to do things which is uh... added to your perception bonus right so your perception score might be fifty and then if you have a perception bonus you take the tens place of your score and then to figure out what your bonus is, it is the tens place plus any advances that you would have. So like if you had two bonus advances and you had a 50, Uh, it would be seven would be your your bonus. The bonuses are not used very often. And if they are, they're actually already uh, factored into places on your sheet. Oh, so what's the, the P what's the, the square, the big square, not the little square, big square. 
Uh, what number is in the big square that you're saying? Eight. So that is your that is your total perception bonus. Then. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. the bonus advance already factored in. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Oh, yeah. I, I got it. Yeah. That's why I handed. Yeah, yeah. And so those are used for things like when you roll damage, you might add uh, an attribute bonus. Or sometimes mm. when you make a skill test to determine the degree of success, I will say, mm. what is your perception bonus? And then like, oh, okay, well, it's if your bonus is real high and you succeeded, maybe you see further than someone who has a lower yeah. bonus and also succeeded. I'm so perceptive. Yeah, yeah, you are very perceptive. Yeah. So you got a six, which means you succeeded Black Eden. I did uh, it. Yeah. W what did you get, Barbara? Uh, I rolled a 43 with a perception of 45. So I believe I succeeded. You did succeed. That is great. Yeah, you Very want to meet perceptive. or be lower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very perceptive. Very perceptive. Uh, how about Giles? Uh Right, yeah, Giles succeeded as well. He had a uh, goal of sixty, and he got an eighty-three. So, blew it out of the water, champ. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a fail. But that's Just okay. Delivered the exact same way I explained my report card to my parents as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, and what about the professor? So I rolled a sixty-two over my awareness of forty. So there's a duck on the stern side, and I'm just like enjoying looking at that duck and not really paying attention to anything else that's like, a good duck look at that duck right there that's that's funny and i'm trying to motion everybody else to come look at the duck but quality duck working. well luckily for you all black eden and barbara you actually see up ahead in some bushes a couple of mud covered ruffians with crossbows uh, out and they have cudgels on their belts um, and uh, they are watching you intently as your barge slowly makes its way up the river. Um, and they, they're crouching almost as if in a stance where they're getting ready to leap upon your boat. Um, your boat, of course, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, is called the Clarabelle. Aww, um, nice. That is what uh, Master Hugo has named his boat. Um, so you can see uh, they're, they're getting ready. Um, so now, uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to establish the initiative ladder, Ooh, mm -hmm. exciting. um, which is a fancy way of saying we're going to get you, the order in which you act, uh, in combat. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your D10, just one of them. Uh, you're going to roll that and you're going to add your initiative modifier, uh, which should be somewhere on your sheet. Does, every, does everybody is. see where it is? No. Okay. It's on the third page. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. Page three. Corrupted. Yeah. Okay. And is cool. this something that we want? It it says three plus PB, so I assume we want high then. Okay. You want high? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have rolled a sixteen, an eighteen. Excuse me. An eighteen. <laughs> You're so ready. this is. One example of you had asked about those bonuses, right? Your perception bonus is added um, to your rolls, and it should already be factored into your initiative mm. modifier, right? Is it on the sheet already? Yeah. Ready to rock? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Excellent. I don't want to say that and then be incorrect. <laughs> wow. uh, okay, cool. So uh, I have rolled, and uh, just for the sake of learning, um, for my uh, bandit folk, I got a 14. Mm. All right. And what did you get again, Professor? An 18. 18 for the prof. Black Eden. 14. 14. Players go first in a tie. Okay. Why? It's a great question. Um, so the reason why players go first in a tie is because, you know, there's fate attached to this. Uh, oh, you all okay. are sort of heroes. Um, and sort uh, of heroes. these folks are not. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. sort of, yeah. You all sort of are protagonists. protagonists. There we go. Mm, better yeah, than yeah. Me. All right, well. Big damn heroes. You're the stars. I might be um, a hero. <laughs> you don't know. Barbara. 
Yeah. What did you get? I got a 15. 15. All right, 15 for Babs. It's Barbara Sturgeon, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I the did Barbara write Barbara Surgeon. I chose Barbara it Sturgeon. It your Barbara Surgeon. I have written out the whole thing here. I promise. I was um, actually don't about to... you. I was. I, I was couldn't tell it. even if you did. <laughs> you were like, I chose it because it rhymed, and I was like, <laughs> and you said you finished the whole thing, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot you have to say like the whole. <laughs> it's like a title, like Lord or Lady. <laughs> And Giles, what did you get? I have a so I rolled a ten on a d10. Is, uh, we spoke of explosions earlier. Is that a thing in this? The, uh, not for initiative. Um, right. Just in. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I have a twenty-one. I also <laughs> should should uh, remind you of my professional trait. And if you want more information, <gasps> what? Oh, sure. Yes, please remind everyone of your professional trait. Well, I know the players, uh, the audience at home, all knows this by by heart. So. Um, Professional trait, Hans shot first. Uh, when combat begins, I gain three APs that must be used immediately at the top of the initiative order. Even if I was surprised, once spent, determine your place in the initiative ladder and take your turns normally. If more than two smugglers are present, uh, I don't like the S word, but you can use it. The, the one with the highest PB goes first. Okay, um, great. Well, you're the only smuggler around. Um so so uh so that's good but uh so that oh, the s word is smuggler <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of muggle <laughs> um oh man guys i've waited so long to play a game with tk and we've been doing this an hour and let me tell you i am already so fulfilled <laughs> i don't even I'm so, I'm so sweaty i can't i can't read i can't add numbers <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of AP, that's a great uh, jumping off point. So in Zweihander, on your turn um, in combat, you have three action points. And you can use your action points to do stuff. Um, you can use them to move. Moving your speed is one action point. Um, you can use it to make an attack. Make an attack is one action point. Um, and then you can also use action points to do perilous stunts, which I think are at the end of your character sheets. Um, there might be a list of perilous stunts. Am I correct about that? Okay. You go. Um, nope, I'm wrong. Uh, I see them. List no, of perilous a, stunts. Yeah. Oh, page okay. page four in the middle of the page. Perilous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just looked at this page and was like, wow, this looks familiar because I forgot that I played a Zweihander game with you. <laughs> <laughs> right yes with with rudy and me uh so it is uh but those are like other things you can do like um inspire your companions uh you can uh try to uh shove someone you can <laughs> choke hold them all that kind of thing um is uh is listed on there the other thing that you can do is you can save your action points um to use for reactions so if you're hit with an attack you can attempt to dodge if it's a ranged attack or parry it if it is a incoming melee attack. Um, but you have to have action points left over. So there's a little bit of like deciding on your turn. How many action points are you going to use? Are you going to try to save some because you're going to mix it up? And maybe you want a chance to be able to dodge an incoming attack if it hits you. Um, so, uh, so that's sort of the very high level how combat works in Zweihander. We're doing everything theater of mm. the mind. So we're going to say that currently these folks are one move away from you um, as far as uh, as that goes. So wh whatever your movement is, they're one movement away from you. Uh, and How shallow Giles... is the water? Sorry, just to, is it like knee deep or ankle deep even? Um, so nobody's gone swimming yet, but you are in a barge, yeah. Yeah, um, which is a good indicator table. that it's pretty shallow. Okay. Um, because they're, they're usually flat bottom boats because they go into shallow like, can shores. we see yeah. the bottom of the oh uh, well like it's gross murky water it's probably gross, what, murky like six water. feet probably mm, yeah disgusting yeah. only one way to find out mate <laughs> yeah that's that's the exciting part um <laughs> but that you could leap onto the bank it looks like they're getting ready to leap off of the bank onto the shore um uh so that's so, so probably like two feet or something then because if we're that close to the bank Hmm. Sorry, I was thinking. I was trying to think about the mechanics of jumping distance in this. Oh, sure. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, it's a. Uh, 
well right and like when you are close yeah. to the bank of the river it is shallower um and so that's also a good indicator yeah. um it's just the four of you on deck um master horace is currently sleeping below deck uh, because it's early in the morning um so giles because of the way your turn works you you basically have six action points to spend <laughs> right now oh, man. um yeah Use those, those perilous stunts. Welcome to Zweihander. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I might have enough action points to like go take over the ship on behalf of these <laughs> bandits. So you can only on your turn attack once. Uh, use an AP, one AP to attack. Like even if you have more left over, you can't keep attacking. But in Ooh, this case, you dang. could also att- you could attack twice because of your special thing would allow you to do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me pretend I know how to attack. Uh, I'm gonna. Here we go. We'll get to that when it special, when it happens. Special action. Okay. I'm spend two of my um my Hans Hans shot first APs mm-hmm. on uh take aim. Okay. To, nice. Uh, to increase my base chance by plus twenty, seems mm-hmm. like a good amount. Um, and then I will a- attack with my light crossbow okay great so you have a uh a skill that you are going to use with a light crossbow um and that skill is going to be simple ranged um which should be under your combat skill um so what is your simple ranged so my simple ranged oh it's also next to my weapon cool oh great perfect so regularly 55 percent, but it's up at 75 because of my up at 75 percent baby watch me miss that is so close to a miss 65 percent hey that's great um so go ahead and roll your damage it will be a d6 plus your combat bonus it should probably on your sheet it says 1d6 plus something Yes, yeah. Under damage next to the weapon, I would guess. Yeah, it just that's just a number. It just says, it just says five. Yeah. Got it. So seven. Okay. Two plus seven. five. Seven. There Great. Okay. Awesome. Take notes. So, two, two plus five. Seven. All right. They will take some damage here. All right. Uh, so those are your first three action points. <laughs> Um, cool. They have not yet jumped aboard, correct? No, no, they're going last in initiative. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, then I will use of my regular action points uh, two to load my light crossbow. Great. So okay. Next to load, and then I will use one more to attack, and this will be like a non-aimed attack. So non-aimed, straight regular... up. Same one that you'd like to attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can only see one of them, and it was because I was looking for the duck off the wrong side of the bow. Go for it. I don't see this duck you're talking about. Why is it over here? <laughs> over there. Uh, oh. 58. I needed a 55. Ah, so that's a, it goes wide. Um, your, your shot goes wide here. Uh, and we come to the professor's turn. What um, weapon? And now they're cursing at you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what weapons do Black Eden and Barbara Sturgeon wield, if any? Or are they wearing um, at any given time? Um, Black Eden proudly wears a, a rapier nice. um, out in the open uh, and then carries a blunderbuss for when things get oh. particularly sassy. Whoa. Uh, Barbara isn't really one for weapons, so sure. to speak, but you always see her with her razor and some scissors and a bone saw. Uh, <laughs> but she always seems to have very full pockets, too. Hmm. Nice. Excuse me. Mysterious. <laughs> um, you heard me. All right. Oh. Seeing these vagabonds with their cudgels, I look at my fists. For these two are also cudgels, and I plan to cudge. <laughs> A word I'm never <laughs> going to use again. <laughs> wow, that's okay. Um, like, and can't so... wait to see how the captions interpreted that. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, a, a stand-in cuss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 
I'm going to charge. I'm going to use a movement action to charge, which makes me move at movement times two and leap off of the barge onto the bank. Um, James, okay. Do you need me to make a check or no? Easy enough to just leap onto the bank from awesome. where you are. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get to the one that that uh, Giles crossbowed, and I'm just mm-hmm. gonna punch him in the fucking face (laughs) yeah (laughs) i actually um and as you all see me leap heroically you see a glint (laughs) of metal around my fists i am using knuckle dusters which are very illegal in uh pugilism but hey in the streets anything goes as we like to say um so these have two qualities also james that i'd like to know what they are it has fast and it has pummeling Mm -hmm. cool Yes, so in Zweihander, some weapons have uh, qualities. Uh, in fact, I think all weapons do, and that really sets your weapon apart from other weapons because they all do similar damage. Um, so, let's see. Fast, if you have a fast weapon. It should be um, AB instead of CB. Oh, okay, it uses a different... Yeah, yes. agility instead of combat. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, pummeling yeah. means that you can't deal, uh, like, g- grievous injuries with it. Gotcha. Which I'm sure we'll get to later as to what a grievous injury is. Yes. Uh, which is definitely. Fun. I can show you. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Whoop. <laughs> um, great. So I'm making a simple melee attack, mm-hmm. which is Four. actually not, I'm not great at, uh, ironically. I have failed with a 54. What's that? Spend a fortune point? Well, if you say so, I guess I should. I'm going to spend one of our fortune points to fail again. Even worse. Welcome to Zvine. All right. All right. <laughs> so in leaping over, I uh, over extend myself and land awkwardly on the wrong foot. I don't have proper. I mean. You, know, you didn't when, warm up. Exactly. I, I was. No stretches. I was looking at the duck. The duck was really fascinating. Uh, but, Yesterday uh, was leg day. So yeah, I don't I plant my feet in the correct way, and my uh, swing goes way wide over this over oh. this guy's face. So big old miss from the professor. Big old miss. All right. Um, that means that we're. It's your turn, Barbara. Uh. Yeah. Ow. How far from these baddies is the professor right now, sort of sprawled out on the ground? Like, uh, well, hold right on. <laughs> I'm standing <laughs> firmly, but uh, I'm in melee. I like, I'm up in their faces. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna apologize in advance because I'm really. Ooh. Yeah, like yeah. Fire in the happen. melee. This she is can fix rim that. And yeah. She can fix it. Yeah, I'll make it better, uh, probably. Um, I'll <laughs> step up to the uh, the the starboard, starboard, starboard yeah. bow, starboard um, bow, and uh, Black Eden. You'll you'll see her sort of just like observe the situation and mm-hmm. rummage around in her pockets really quick, and and she'll pull out a bottle, <laughs> and. <laughs> You know what I'm doing, and throw it at the feet of the two ruffians. Um, so you're gonna have to tell me what this bottle bomb does. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So yeah, a bottle bomb. <laughs> I mean, it's probably uh, like molasses or something. It probably just like there's a box. It's confetti. In it. no, it's a yeah, glitter bomb for sure. Yeah, it's a glitter. It's fine. You're fine. It's, it's- yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's a fiery glitter bomb, apparently. That's what Same. it says. Yes. Is it fine? Is it so fine, it Gabe? is a, a fiery, volatile uh, weapon, look, look. which means you don't want to get it. My name's a... Diana. That's super rude. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoop. So you can choose another engaged foe, um, like someone who is next to them. Uh, who can be lit on fire, which means you could choose the professor, but mm. you could also choose the other uh, uh, freebooter mm. who is next to them. The foe and one other combatant. <laughs> the professor mm. promised he'd turn, Kill your friend. teach me how to use my ABC, so I feel like I'm probably going to set the other <laughs> ruffian on fire. Yeah, that's the person you want to learn ABCs from. What is yeah. my nickname? <laughs> 
It's I'm wearing a tie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's true. All all people who wear ties are learned. It's a it's a fact. That um, is what I've always canon in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's canon. There's actually only one necktie in the whole world. In the yeah. Yeah. I want it, yeah, in a fight. It There's is like another form of a belt. It. I would say. Profession Walked into a debate club. And we have success. Just beat, yeah, I just beat everybody yes. up in the debate club. And took them. Nice. All right. So, so roll your D6. Yeah. And let me know if you get a six or higher. I did roll a six. Nice. Roll again and add that to the entire total. And if you get another six, another keep... six. Oh, go Campbell again. Killed the professor. Incredible. <laughs> oh no. A four. Okay, nice. Uh, so that so total you've got sixteen plus. Is there any modifier that it's telling you to add there? No. Nope, okay. It's just zero, and then it says see fiery. Okay, and I also failed. So the way fiery works is, uh, an an engaged foe uh has to make. A coordination test. If they fail, which I did, they take another two d. So th this engaged person is going to take two d ten plus two fire damage. Oh my god! <laughs> so they are on fire now, right? That's their condition. Is on mm. fire. Let's see. I think that is correct. I'm, it doesn't made that smell up. Right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So when you're on fire, well, uh, we'll get to that in a second. That is a condition, though. In Zweihander is on fire. I didn't uh, know that. I just may. Sure are Sounds on like fire. A problem, it was just honestly. it was capitalized in the description, so I was like, "That's a mechanic choice." <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. <laughs> I'm an editor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well, the My one God. who you hit uh, is a flaming corpse on the ground now. Incredible. Falls to the ground, screaming as the smell of burning flesh comes into your nose professor mm. uh reminding you of a sunday roast uh it, roll mm. 2d10 for me diana tell me what you get to determine how much damage the other person takes that's an 18 18 they look very badly injured uh and let's see so when you so the way Zweihander works is you have a damage condition track um, and we'll talk about how you move up that when one of you gets damaged. Um, if one of you ever gets damaged at this point, I should say. Um, but at certain points, you roll to see if you uh, suffer like an injury when that happens. Now, you all, when you suffer injuries, um, it could be something like a black eye, right? Or, a, you know, a, you, you break a bone in your hand or something like that. Something that only makes us hotter. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, um, a cool scar, um, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, however, I can when... help with that again. <laughs> <laughs> Why? When uh, most of the time when an NPC takes an injury, they're they're knocked out, right? They're They're out of the fight is sort of the way that goes. So it eliminates them faster. Again, you're the protagonists. You're special. Um, there are no injuries suffered, though, from this, other than that they are currently on fire, which, when you're on fire, makes you more likely to suffer an injury um, whenever you take damage. But they look pretty terrible. Um, and we're going to go to... Uh, well, is there anything else you'd like to do, Barbara, since that's one of your three APs <laughs> you've used? Uh, it, just observe. Really. Yeah, yeah. Just take in the sights. Take a look at that duck. Yeah, and it is um like so the one one is instantly like as the flame consumes them they don't even get to scream they fall to the ground but the one who is on fire is screaming bloody murder has dropped their crossbow and is just like ah, 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 over and over and over again. Uh, Blackie, <laughs> you, you go wake up the. The, the captain could you just... <laughs> yeah i like to think that black eden and barbara were having like a little bit of tea and you know mm -hmm. just a just a early morning tea just getting into the routine of the day and black eden had uh the high perception that allowed them to look down the bank and see this fucking amateur hour <laughs> of these bandits getting ready to jump on board i like to think black eden is still sipping tea and sitting down and i'm gonna go ahead and wait um if they get on board 
fine. I'll make it my problem. But honestly, it seems like everybody else has got this handled. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and if there's a, a hold action or something like that, that's fine. Um, I did yeah. see that wait was a was a, a possibility. So I, I'll go ahead and do that. Absolutely, you can wait. Um, and uh, this uh, individual is going to like try to stop, drop, and roll to put out the fire. <laughs> um, You're doing splendidly, hot. darling. Uh, so incredible work. Uh, so they do manage to put out the fire. But they're now looking up at you, uh, Professor. Is talking um, a free action? Like we can just yeah. Talk. All right, I yeah. say uh, be mindful of the leeches. Do I you think yield? <laughs> <laughs> and very weakly says, "Yes, oh gods, yes, <laughs> yes." He <laughs> says he gives up. I yell back to everybody else. <laughs> Good throw. Uh, and you can see the, the boat is just. Just still, still. Yeah. I mean, it's still moving, but like it's long enough and slow enough that Black Eden like crunches on a, yeah. another little biscuit. <laughs> I grab his arm and start dragging him along the bank. Should we oh, take him with us? Uh, no, nah, right? We don't need him. Yeah, yeah. You could just let me go by the side of the bank here. You're just like a I don't need to go type, with you. Right? There's no greater little, mystery little... to your actions, is there? Yeah, just uh, uh, and um, says uh. You know, to be honest, this is our first day of crime. <laughs> uh, Can I over the the side of the boat? Yeah. If you need a physician, I'll be around. Oh, oh that seems like a waste of resources, dear Professor. It's just hold his manage. head under the water until the bubbles stop. It'll really be better for everyone. That doesn't seem very gentlemanly. That's what I mean. Oh. Uh. I yeah, you could just leave me by the bank. That Is there like an bad. insight? What, what He's like it? interrogates, I guess. Scrutinize. Or? Scrutinize, be... of course. Yeah. Um, you good? <laughs> is he just like a uh, bumbling oh, dope? Yeah. Who, so there's uh, some stuff the, you can know without making boat? a. Yeah. yeah, without making a roll, you can tell that uh, he is terrified of Barbara, <laughs> <laughs> who lit him on fire and has no desire to get any sort of medical help uh, uh, from this uh, barber Rude. surgeon. Uh, uh, but was definitely spoiling to rob you mm. as well. All right. um, I'm going to look down. My... All right, mate. Now this here, this is what we call, and now I'm Australian, this is what we call <laughs> a teachable moment. And you should take that from me, the professor. And then I tip my trilby hat to him, and I let his arm go, and I jump back onto the barge. Upsetting. He says, the, the, thank you, thank you. And then turns around and looks at the body and goes, oh, Horus. Um, Wait, another Horus? <laughs> yeah, it's a common name. It's uh, the Horus Brothers. <laughs> as, uh, Teachable as moment. This... Horus Horus and so Luigi Horus. Horus yeah. this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you uh you call that just as the door to the lower decks opens and master horus comes out he is middle-aged man balding uh with a bit of a mustache um comes out and he says well 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 what a delightful Ooh! and sees the smoldering flesh and immediately passes out on oh the no deck. <laughs> everybody back up give oh, me some room no. to work <laughs> yeah <laughs> Black Eden still stays sitting, has eaten the filling out of all of the little cookies, and it's just like watching. It's just like, hmm. I'm gonna look for that duck again. We didn't go too far. Can I see the duck still? Yeah, yep, there's the still a duck just enjoying the the wake of the barge. What a life. Uh, uh, hanging out. This great. guy's head like <laughs> smashes into the, the deck of the barge, and, it, <laughs> and Black Eden looks over the shoulder like, oh, I see it. I see the duck. <laughs> its tail is like black, but it it's white, so it's it's very cute. Yes, Can I, I would like to pull out my smelling salts mm -hmm. and get like real up close to Captain Horace, so that when he comes to, the first thing he sees <laughs> is my face right here. <laughs> uh, 
So ready spaghetti. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry, Sean. What was that? Oh, uh, I was I was asking Barbara if before you do that, can I can I rifle through his pockets? <laughs> Absolutely not. He's our captain. Right, but then maybe I could be captain again. <laughs> Some people keep deeds mm-hmm. on their no. Okay, no. I'm I'm hearing no from the group. That's totally cool. It's totally cool. Yeah. Professor, you didn't see any bolts in the in the burned guy, did you? No? All right, great. Oh, uh, yeah. Could I just pull that out of him real fast as I walked it past? Just the caught on oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they're, yeah. Their Invest equipment in is metal not... In, in iron crossbow bolts is my advice. I'm really my... upset by the idea of our smuggler, like, washing <laughs> paper towels and hanging them back up to reuse <laughs> crossbow bolts. <laughs> He, uh, that's, that's how you get head yeah. he's lived with me for three days I haven't slept or showered I subsist totally on coffee and cigarettes mm, what upsetting. About the <laughs> they know how to get things just not for themselves uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, Captain Horace does the smelling salts wakes up wide eyed is r- sees Barbara right there and is like oh oh <laughs> <clears throat> madam, madam, <laughs> oh yes, uh, hello, uh, hi, thank, thank, thank Are you feeling thank, better now? Thank you, yeah, yes, yes, thank you, what a wonderful barber surgeon you are. It's, uh, you know, I, my name is Barbara Sturgeon because I'm the best barber surgeon, it you, rhymes and everything, you let me did, help you up. You did mention that, oh, thank you, and he like, whew, comes to his feet but is still bent over, winded. Um, and uh, looks forward and says, "Oh, looks like we're coming into port." Uh, uh, and uh, and says, uh, "I think it's probably time we settled up." I am glad oh. that I hired you to presumably take care of what I hope were bandits. Yeah, yes. I yes. Mean, you as... certainly can't prove otherwise. <laughs> They were definitely bad. In my professional opinion, they were they were bad. Yeah. Bad crossbows and cudgels. Exactly, just the like cudge. these. <laughs> um, oh no! Hmm. <laughs> Is that not common parlance? Uh, and he says, uh, he like shakes his head, and he says, "Well, uh, I suppose um, two silver shillings each will do it." Um, and he uh, opens his purse and he gives each of you two silver coins. What can I buy with a silver coin, James? Great question. Thank uh, you. I certainly deserve this. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you deserve more. This will buy me a crossbow bolt. <laughs> just one. Just one. Yeah. Can we just have everything be how many crossbow bolts can I get yeah. with this? Just shh. That's our crossbow bolts is like a happy meal. <laughs> but yes. I mean, you could get a lot with two silver shillings. So there's, okay. there's, uh, in Zweihander, you got brass pennies, you got silver shillings, and you got gold crowns. Um, so, um, yeah. And so, and the, the exchange rate isn't actually like 10, 10, 10. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little more. Yeah. Uh, it's like, 10 Standard. 23 37 yeah i think we, it is it. 20 brass pennies to a silver shilling and then 12 uh silver okay. shillings to a gold Ooh, crown so demonic. 240 brass pennies to a gold crown so with a silver a the 240 is correct but the other two are backwards oh i flipped them i yeah. I, I inverted them well, so i buy yeah. like an 20. evening meal and a night at an inn or oh like yeah definitely drinks definitely. okay cool. so like Incredible. a tankard a of a tankard of ale is one brass penny. Oh, okay. Cool. So idea, this seems so. like a very generous payment for one combat that we had. So twenty four rounds of ale. Although it I'll, was three I'll, days of your time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll oh. tell you what, Captain. Uh for a limited time offer, I can give you a haircut and maybe take care of that bad back thing you got going on for one more silver. Oh. Ooh. All right, so Make a bargain test. Oh um, God! Now, Incredible. here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, is that in Zweihander, the circumstances can give you a bonus to the roll, right, or a penalty to the roll. Like we could say, if what you're trying to do is really hard, 
maybe you take minus 10 to it or minus 20 or 30. Um, if what you're trying to do is particularly easy, you get a bonus to whatever you would normally make. So because I think maybe Master Horus is in need of a haircut um, and does have a back thing that you have identified, um, I am going Medical to give you terminology. <laughs> plus 20 to Whoa. whatever you normally have. Oh, is yeah. that in addition to my um, my skill rank? Thing? Yes, yes, exactly. So that's all in addition to anything else that you have for bargain. Uh yeah, we're gonna just spend that fortune. Yeah, this yes. is to me now. <laughs> yeah, that's a 13. That's nice. so successful. Um, so uh he agrees and he says, Yes, well, uh perhaps as we pull in to uh to port here uh and he like sits down on a barrel <laughs> and uh gets gets ready and says do your worst we're the only five people on deck still right like, there's nobody actually driving this boat into port i'm just gonna uh, make way yeah, how's the boat oh, yeah. powered i mean we're just oh uh, yeah i don't know so presumably you all are able to right now it's sort of moving under the power of the river just slowly and lazily but yeah uh presumably uh you oh, yeah. all can... It's pretty basic. It's, you, it's, there's like piloting in this game or something, right? Piloting but is a skill which I don't is used. Know that, uh, would, would we need to use that for this kind of like simple? No, okay, yeah. no, I'm this going, is a... I can look at ducks and pilot the barge simultaneously. So yeah, basically you're waiting for it to bring. You're waiting for the river to bring you near a port, and gotcha. then you'll have to like throw a rope to a Got dock like attendant. Who you that boy. Yeah. <laughs> Pull in yeah. this whole barge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoa, uh, me, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it fast. There's two pennies in it for you. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, well, this uh, intense piloting is happening to get us from here to there. Um, when he sits down on the barrel, Barbara goes behind him and she just cracks her knuckles. And oh, you see like her that. lift her knee, put it mm -hmm. squarely in between his shoulder blades, grab his his longish kind of kind of gross tossily hair just just grabs it in sort of a fistful yanks his head back you hear his spine crack Ooh. and then she just uses the bone saw to cut off the extra hair the bone saw <laughs> <laughs> um did i stutter <laughs> my name is barbara sturgeon <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Surgeon. Yeah, I make a mental uh, note of that for the cage fights that I have in the future. That seems like a great finisher. The uh, Sturgeon backcracker, I think, is what I will call it in the future. This is medicine. Oh, <laughs> right. It's medicinal backcracking. Uh, he wow. looks shocked and lets out like a yelp, but then stands up straight and is walking around and oh, oh. I do feel much better, madam. Thank you. And gives you like a bow. So welcome. So that's silver. Uh, and he will give you an extra silver. I pocket it. God, I'm just thinking of the layers on top. <laughs> um, I'm just imagining and... what's happened entangled. Oh, yeah. Uh, he turns to all of you and says, the hair, it looks better, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and he says, "Oh, I, I cannot wait to get to my mirror." And he Ooh. runs down. We uh, should go. We should go. We as, should go as the you that boy <laughs> pulls up. Um, God, you know that this is where you were always meant to part ways. Master Hugo is going to spend some time here in Swansea. Um, now, from what you can see, Swansea. Uh, is two hills on either side of the river. Oh, should we show um, the map of Swansea, the big map? Yes, let's, yes. Let's here we go. Show the yeah, because I'm imagining something very inappropriate, and I want to be wrong. I want desperately two to hills. be wrong. Yeah, two I'm hills. two hills, one river. So, <laughs> as you are uh, making your way off the docks, um, and you've you've come to your final destination here you're parting ways with horace who you can hear say oh my beautiful hair <laughs> um as you get off the docks here um 
there is a person waiting to meet you who you all know as Anya. Um, and a big smile on their face. So they're uh, happy to see us. They are. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> Just let me check my notes here. <laughs> they, they are. Uh, <laughs> they are um, happy to see you all. Um, and they shake their head and say, I should have known. All of you created that mess just north of town on the bank. Bert's already gotten down about this? I guess I guess we weren't in sight of town. You're talking about the the ducks. Yeah, the ducks. ducks. I'm I'm talking about the duck barbecue that you created. Yes, and they're welcome. I can't, first of all, I can't believe you all know each other. Wild. Small world. Small world. Very small. Smaller than the the cut you gave that guy's ear, am I right? Nah. You know he never found the other piece. He never did. Otherwise, maybe you could have had your first lesson in sewing it back on. So I just stitched it shut. It's a little curvy now, but it it was beautiful work. I have to say, I was I was odd, honestly. It, uh, true if talent he'll you stop discovered. Stop screaming. Yeah. <laughs> My dad says hi, Black Eden. Ew. My dad says hi, Anaya. Tell him I say hi back. So. (laughs) So I just walk into something. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And uh, they'll they'll say uh, just a different kind of rivalry. Um, Honestly, (laughs) I'm wondering if you all could. Before you continue, Anya, I have a gift for you. And I take my championship belt off and I say, This... Oh. You know, I had talked about doing this for quite some time, but now I'm doing it and it... Oh, it's hard. Um, <clears throat> this belt was... Uh, it represents all that I've overcome as a fighter. Uh, all that I've succeeded in. And uh, I think of those times when I was beaten to a pulp and you helped nurse me back and showed me how to be a better fighter. And so, therefore, I want you to have this. Here, Anya, cherish it as I have. And uh, she will uh, say, oh, I, uh, Professor. The Professor. (laughs) (laughs) The Professor. I don't know that I can accept this. You earned I, this. I insist. I demand it. Uh, I I mean, I already have one, though. I'm the champion of Swansea. What? <laughs> my hat flies off my head. <laughs> I mean, this one's nice, but it's not as nice as the one I have. My demeanor just changes. Oh my god! 150%. Friends to rivals. Would you like my a salve trope. for that burn? Oh, this is the main quest giver of the whole starter set, right, James? Additional question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just need quick clarification. Do you sleep in this championship belt? Sometimes. What on earth must it smell like once it comes off I mean, your body? I mean, dip it in the river like every now and then. Guy about dip it in the river. Yeah. It smell it bad. This is Ooh. dark fantasy. All of us smell terrible. All <laughs> yes, yeah. of that's course. the dark part. <laughs> um, oh, Anya will on the inside. <laughs> say, "I have a proposal for you. If you help me with a problem I have, why don't I see if I can earn that belt from you?" So we'll f- we'll fight, and I'll earn that belt from you. Yeah, both of our titles on the line. Oh. But first, you've got to help me with a favor. Champion meets champion. All right. I love it. A unification bout. This feels vaguely romantic. <laughs> Should we leave? Uh, no, no, knows? I need your help, too. I want to be here for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I I don't want to hear any of that. I don't think that. Um, and they'll say, uh, so listen. I'm... Uh, as you know, the constable of this village, and it's been a year since I've stepped into my role, and honestly, this job is a cakewalk. This is a sleepy little town 
where nothing ever happens. I basically get to go into places. People give me free stuff because I'm the constable and I collect a paycheck. But I'm the only law enforcement here of any kind in this city. Uh, and in the past few weeks, things got harder. A few it, locals it like have gone robbing people. Are you robbing people? No, no, I'm not robbing people. You go in, they give you free stuff because you're. Yeah, they want to be on my good side. I'm the constable. Am I the only one that feels like? That's yes, right? you are the, the you. You are the only one. Okay, cool. Apologies. He's not a very good robber. Forgive him. Are Are you a? You're a robber now. Me? me? No, I'm a boat captain. A legitimate boat captain. Yeah, I, I heard about what happened to your boat. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, and they'll say, Is but... this romantic? Something's <laughs> happening. There's something in electric I'm not in the air. I'm from my father. <laughs> Listen, a few weeks ago, locals started to go missing. And I've been investigating, but so far I haven't turned anything up. And since those disappearances, things have gotten even worse. Last night, two people were found dead. One here in East Shore. Whoa. And they point over to the other side of the river. <laughs> okay, and the other start. in West Shore. Okay. Oh, and okay. East City. Nothing like <laughs> what did you just murder <laughs> or kidnapping ever happens here in Swansea. Oh. And like I said, I'm the only person here. I could really use your help. I can give you all the details on the way back to my office if you'll join me. You're deputizing us? Yes. You need us to cause problems to make you look good to the city council and just no. fire up. No, I need you to help me solve the case of missing people and murder. They're two miles up the coast. They're no. <laughs> yeah, so Not listen. that murder. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know Barbara's handiwork when I see it. <laughs> I... Of course we'll help you. We're always happy to help you with anything that you need. Um, D ditto. And they say, "Listen, I I can pay you. Oh. Uh, I can pay you one gold crown each <gasps> Whoa. for the job. Two or actually, I'm sorry, how many, two gold crowns each. How many crossbow bolts can I buy with that many <laughs> gold rounds? Great question. Because I heard uh, how much silver they cost, and it's just outrageous. make it up, James. Just make it up. <laughs> Seventy-two. Whoa, yeah. Giles. No so fucking way, really. Or I guess actually it would be a hundred because it's two gold crowns, seventy-two per gold crown. So it did look like you were doing math, but I don't know if you were doing math or just looking up. No, it's not. Maybe you have a sign. The mystique of the game math. Oh, wow, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're That's like totally wrong. must interpret every it's totally wrong. His facial expression. It's fifty-four. For... It's fifty-four per gold crown, so it would be a hundred and eight. How much is it? I thought you said it was nine for a silver. Yeah. And right. isn't it 20 silver to a gold crown? Yeah. So 20 times 9. What oh, path I have I brought one. us down? Okay, it, moving on. No, Lots. It's, Lots it's is the answer. It's 360 crossbow bolts Ooh. for yeah. two gold crowns. Yes, Except we'll that... come to your office with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so uh, on the way, I the constable says discount i'm sorry I'm just, <laughs> that's a good upset. point honestly. Okay. When you're please go ahead i'm sorry what does the constable say for, yeah. so uh you're walking through this town right and on you can see that um a lot of this village is like squat one-story buildings um, most of them are made out of wood um you can see people going to and fro from places looks like a lot of merchants here um a fair number of uh uh like people who then work to support the economy of the town um people who work in taverns and you know blacksmiths people who work at the docks that so kind of thing you said this is like a crossroads are we on like the frontier or is this just the stop to a larger city in either this direction? is a stop on the way to a larger city okay. it's actually a stop yeah. between two larger cities gotcha okay so. cool yeah. So, uh, just looking at the map, we stopped off at the dockyards, and now we're going to the constable's office on the east shore. Is that correct? 
That is totally correct. Yes. Look, I mean, Look I asked you. a real question. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're making your way uh, there and um, you're seeing these buildings and Anya says, three weeks ago, Hale Larkspur and Proctor Lamb, both retainers of the wealthy artist Lord Franklin Vauxhall, disappeared. I am going to send all of this to you as text, so don't worry about writing it down because right. I have it in front of me so I can send it to, to you all so you'll have. But Thanks, audience, GM. if you'd like to play along with the mystery, <laughs> you write it down. And there'll be a quiz um, during the post show. So put your That's email right. in chat and we'll email you the yeah. <laughs> If you get the quiz wrong, you know the penalty. <laughs> so this was three weeks ago. Hale and Proctor, who are the retainers of Lord Franklin Vauxhall, disappeared. They were last seen at the Full Tankard in West Shore. That's a tavern. They live at Vauxhall Manor, which is in the same neighborhood, and they were the first to disappear. Refugees escaping a war have come to stay in Swansea, as it's one of the first places they go when fleeing Old Ghulistan, which is where there, a war has broken out, the country of Old Ghulistan. A few weeks ago, three of those refugees, Tobias, Reina, and Diona, disappeared. Oh. Then, two other people who lived in Swansea alone disappeared. But it seems like they didn't just up and leave. Their homes were stocked with fresh food, and all of their possessions, including money, were still there. Maximilian Steger, who is a courtier, went missing last week, as did our dockmaster, Lander Resnick. Now, early this morning, that's when the real tragedy stuck. That's when the real tragedy struck. Father Pierre, who is an adherent of the martyr, the martyr is a god, um, who uh, is a god of healing, um and and worship what is uh, barbara surgeon's relationship with the god of healing tell me barbara sometimes sort of adversarial but for mm. the most part we're on the same side yeah there you go the same goal but the copay that he charges is just unreasonable <laughs> yeah i have my rates are far better well, our priest of the martyr was found dead. Um, he's well, also a that's sculptor. That's what it'll get you. Uh, he was found in an alley in West Shore, and his body was taken into the chapter house of the martyr. At almost the same time, passersby found the body of Edgar Badlam, who is also a refugee, stabbed to death on the riverbank of the East Shore under the drawbridge. His body is here. And she walks up to her office uh and says inside my office that's where edgar is what makes you think the two bodies you found are related to everyone else who disappeared it feels like with everyone coming and going it could really be anyone killing people mm. um anya will say uh i don't know that those things are related mm. um but i do know that nothing like missing people or murders ever happens in Swan. Mm. Um, so I suspect they could be. Did anything change hmm. a couple of weeks ago? <sighs> Not that I can think of, but there's always people coming and going mm. in town. Has there been um, a particular influx of refugees because of the war in Old Gulzian? Uh, old Ghulistan. Ghulistan uh, yes, of course. I don't travel. Much. <laughs> oh, from, from, from. Yes. Uh, yes, there there has been um, an influx of refugees, but that's been going on for months. Mm. Oh, sure. And we're positive that they were killed here. Mm. Uh, the I imagine the two people who were killed here they're they're residents of Swansea. Um, so I don't think they would be killed elsewhere and then dumped here. Um, but well, let's I take a take look at the body. <laughs> uh, Disgusting. And... Yeah, Black Eden takes out like a, a silk handkerchief and like ties it in front of their face. <laughs> I don't want to smell this. I don't want to see it either. I will leave it to you, Barbara Sturgeon. Say the full name. The, the Barbara Sturgeon. Thank you, the professor. Oh, thanks. So the way this works, right, is this is an investigative adventure. 
um, you all can follow any clues or any leads that you want. I have just emailed you the bullet points that I gave to you so that you have them as well. Ooh, I love stuff. Um, but uh, you can, you know, like if you want to go check out that lead and, you know, I don't know, say go examine a crime scene under the drawbridge or in the alley or you want to visit the full tankard or whatever, you can go do that. So right now, it sounds like we've we're performing an autopsy. Uh, oh my like god, that. Proctor is the given name. Who did that? Yes. <laughs> uh, I did. I wrote the adventure. Um, You're a nightmare. <laughs> did you, did you imagine like the parents being like, "Oh, little Proctor." Mm-hmm. James, could you could you ask the 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 author of this if Proctor is this person's title or name? It's their oh. name. <laughs> okay. So they yeah, could be yeah. Mayor Proctor Lamb at some point in their life. Yeah, Doctor Proctor. Proctor Proctor. Doctor Proctor. Proctor Proctor, 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 Proctor Esquire. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, I was mean to you that one time. I would like to assist um, Barbara. <laughs> I was going to say, James, like, uh, how do you feel about us splitting up to follow separate leads? Is that yeah. a thing? I feel that great. Would be a good idea or a bad Wait, idea? Wait, what? Let's <laughs> party! I'm just uh, asking because you... I don't want to watch Barbara Surgeon yeah. cut up a dead body. That does not the Barbara Surgeon, the Barbara Surgeon. I do not want to watch her. Yeah, cut up I think body. that if so, the professor goes yeah. elsewhere to follow a lead, then Black Eden will accompany him. Uh, he, him, him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Black Eden will accompany him. Uh, I have like taken out the the handkerchief, stepped one foot into the room with like this preserved body, and then promptly said, "I have business elsewhere." I can <laughs> use a like, drink. Turns around well, yes, and, so. yeah, uh, it looks like I'm not needed here. This is frankly disgusting. <laughs> and yeah, just, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, I would recommend that you all set up like a, I don't know, a rendezvous point to meet and exchange clues at some point. What was the name of the bar that the, the first folks disappeared from? The Full Tankard. It's down on the West Shore. I think it's, yeah, the one on the map. How, okay. how about you meet us at the Full Tankard when you're finished? That's where we're going. Oh. So. Well, that's perfect <laughs> then. Yeah. Go somewhere else and then meet us at the Full Tankard. <laughs> <laughs> or do what you want. I, don't know. I suppose we could always check out the church as well. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, because that's on the west shore as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, nothing is super far from anything else yeah. here, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's small a walking village. village. Yeah. 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 No so you can go wherever you want. Or anything. Is there a yeah? Is on that subject, is there a, a horse and carriage we could take across the bridge or? Hop on me back. I'll to... carry you, Black Eden. Oh, this that... is perfect training. I haven't been able to do as much as I want on the boat for the past. Upsetting, few days. absolutely not. <laughs> well, think about how demeaning it is. For who? Wow. Not if he's asked us. me to do it. I suppose that's true. That just makes it creepy. Yes. It's... Upsetting for everyone uh, involved. Anya <laughs> says, uh, y- "Yes, you could hire a carriage, but honestly, it's it's a short ride. I don't know that anybody would be willing to take you. Usually, carriages are reserved for carting, you know, um, the the feeble. Um, uh, and, and this and town is goods. filthy. I suppose I'll walk. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh." Anya will turn to uh, Giles and Barbara and say, some people never change, huh? <laughs> She's always been like that. Before, They've always been like that. Uh, so where are Black Eden and the professor headed? So we're going to head to the chapter house of the martyr, which is where... Okay. Uh, the body of. So you're gonna go Eden. examine a different body? <laughs> huh? Well, I don't want to examine it. I'm sure oh. they've already prepared it for I mean, burial. I want to ask questions. But... Yeah, exactly. It's mainly there is a there is a victim that's from there. Disgusting. We don't so, know yeah, how don't... he was killed either. We just know that he was found dead. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Realistically, like the chapter house has probably already prepared them and and like i'm sure there's somebody we could it, it, do we know if this is um 
okay just for my edification is this is this structured a little bit more like say a a, a european like like england can church like protestant church like type of thing or is this like fully fantasy religion where i wouldn't know what like priests and stuff are and things like that and it's like a little bit more hush hush on how like all of the religions like so you would you would know how um the, like the the martyr uh is a deity who has a church in every major settlement right right and even smaller settlements like this um and they often have multiple clergy okay i yeah i guess i guess what i'm um trying to say is like would i understand do can i understand like as a player what an adherent is if that's like a priest if that is the person who's in yeah, charge of the the thing question. or if it's just oh, a member of question. the church so yes that is um not in charge uh so an adherent right oh. is um and and you would know this so like um, a parishioner yeah yeah the the person who is in charge of a chapter house is often referred to as a revered something oh, okay usually a, like a parent reverend, name, like a reverend. revered mother Sorry. revered father revered okay. parent um, um do we know the i know this person is an adherent can i ask another question um would we know the the significance of that person who is not a member of the church in a significant way being taken to a chapter house instead of their body being taken to the constable's office? Is this a situation mm. where like you have to be given a Catholic burial or you don't go to heaven or? Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, the significance would probably be that the church for whatever reason wanted this adherent of the faith in there and okay. that the church in many in many places including Sw swansea it can like override the constable but not the other person's body they might want this person but not that other person right they didn't it doesn't seem like edgar was an adherent so okay wait, then it, that yeah sorry father pierre that's not a title of his within the church it just his name is that father. is a title of his within the, okay. within the church but just so, so, so like maybe a, just a, okay. a priest or something like that like a lay priest. yeah a priest in training basically gotcha. oh okay uh, yeah maybe like friar or a layman or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. was it was working working uh, his way up the ranks gotcha, 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 gotcha. okay yeah. so yeah so he is he he would be more likely to be taken okay that's gonna flavor our like approach Definitely. to these people then Definitely. okay cool so that let's uh uh, you're led into the office, uh, Barbara and Giles. Um, I would, under my breath, to mm -hmm. Giles as we're walking in, don't lift anything off the corpse. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> um, so you can see this is uh, the constable's office is uh, squat and two stories and made of red brick. So it's it's fairly noticeable in this town. Um, Inside, though, it contains just two rooms, both visible when you enter uh, on the first floor. The first is a meeting space that doubles as the constable's office. It contains a simple wooden desk with chairs, a grandfather clock, and shelves that uh, lined with various records. There is a blunderbuss resting against the wall behind the desk. Nice. Um, the second room is a barred jail cell, and you can see there's a blood-stained sheet resting over a lumpy shape atop a wooden bench. Um, it's otherwise barren in there. Uh, and it smells immediately of decay as you come in. Fresh decay, not like, oh, this has been going on for a long time. But enough that somebody overnight was, was left out, and it's not great. Um, uh, and it's very obvious that that is where the body is. The door to the cell is open. It's not closed or locked or anything. Um, and uh, Anya just motions and says, well, have at it. Uh, Barbara is unaffected, seemingly completely unaffected by the smell. It's actually something she's fairly used to. But she just kind of like almost excitedly approaches the sheet and sort of whips it off like she's revealing a pile of gifts <laughs> um, yes yes and you would see 
beneath uh, Edgar's body, um, which uh, it's the corpse of an elderly man with tan skin covered in bruises. Um, he's caked in mud, and there's a look of horror frozen on his face. Now, I believe, Barbara Sturgeon, you have, I think, like, indifference as a trait or, or something similar, which means that when you see a horrific scene, you are fine. I don't care. You've, you've seen it before. I believe, Giles, you do not, which means that you need to make a role to withstand horror right now. So make a resolve test with a minus 10. Uh, so cool. th that means that whatever your bonus normally is, my willpower, less than that. which is normally at 40, is now at 30. Oh. Because I had... Whew, okay. Uh, Giles is just a chimney of cigarette smoke as he's trying to drown out the smell. <laughs> <laughs> That is a 14. Hey, that's oh, yeah. great. So you are uh, not uh, in mechanically yeah. affected yeah. by things here. You knew you were going to see a dead body. You I swallowed. I was just... yeah. Yeah. Is he still unaffected when I start prodding the wounds? I throw up immediately. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> I just grab a grab like a bucket out of the corner. I'm just like, nope. This is gone. Uh, basically, I I would like to see if I can discern whether or not the because he was stabbed to death, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, you can I see. I want to see if those wounds were inflicted with any kind of precision, mm. or if it was just kind of like random stabbing followed by rolling him in the mud and maybe kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> You say it was all bruised. I mean, it seems like overkill to me. It does. It does the seem overkill like overkill killer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a great question. So I just want to, I'm just checking my notes here to make sure. I've Barbara's known time. for her smarts. I just want to uh, assist by like moving the body around as Barbara directs me. And then if she wants so, to take my stiletto to see. Could if you give him a sponge bath? <laughs> Get some of that mud off of there. I light up two more cigarettes with three in my mouth. I start <laughs> cleaning the body up. <laughs> you could make a heel test, Barbara. Okay. Uh, and this is straight up and down, no no plus or minus um, on the difficulty end. But you also do find something in addition to whatever we'll learn from the heel test. Uh, that is a 36, and I have a 60, so success. Okay. Um, so it looks like there are two different weapons that have wounded this individual. Um, one appears to be a smaller blade, um, like a, a knife of some kind. Um, and the other is uh, not, and that looks like, like stab wounds, right? Um, the other appears to be slashes, as if made with uh, some sort of saber or or longer blade like that. Um, so you can tell that there are those two kinds of things, and it does look like um, the people who did this had some skill, um, although you wouldn't say... It, you've seen a lot of wounds in your time as a barber. Caused certainly. a lot of wounds. Yeah. <laughs> Um, caused a lot of wounds. You would say this doesn't look like the mark of someone necessarily military trained, okay. but someone who has experience, uh, uh, maybe like a noble who's been trained, or you someone know what I mean, like pretends to know what they're doing. Yeah, okay. yeah, someone who who's a hobbyist. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, God, I last question: uh, Does yeah. Obviously, we, we've we entered an age in which gunpowder is fairly common with there being a blunderbuss and, and other people have weaponry like that. How how common would it be for someone to be carrying a saber in this day and age? Good question. So common in the sense that um, we're, we're in the age of like muskets and things that you need to load one, you know, 
bullet at a time. And so it takes yeah. a long time to do that. Um, so it is fairly common that someone who felt the need to defend themselves would be carrying a sword or uh, pretty much everybody carries at least a knife mm -hmm. on them. But a sword is like, you probably got some money <laughs> um, if you're if you're walking around with a sword. That's uh, that's more gold crowns than uh, nine crossbow bolts, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, um, How many crossbow bolts could I buy with one sword? Um, no. Um, okay. Thank you for not making me answer that. <laughs> no, I, I like you, James. I don't know what's wrong with these other people. But, um, <laughs> I is... don't like games. It's right there. Yeah. It feels like process of elimination. <laughs> uh, I've never had a friend before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with with uh my lovely assistant uh <laughs> cleaning out some of the muck for me, is there anything further medically relevant to to the wounds? Like is it safe to assume that the beating the that the bruises were part of this i mean yes or did they look is, old so the the bruises also look fresh um although very clearly what killed was you know were, were these wounds these um, wounds in fact probably the saber um in particular seems to be the weapon that dealt the killing blow um you do also find Something curious under the fingernails of Edgar, uh, which are uh, scraps of gray thread. And uh, you or Giles could make an education or folklore test to see if you know anything more about that. And you get a plus 20 to Whoa. it. Um, I, I think I'm going to let Giles take this one because I'm pretty sure I'm just going to cut him open and start digging around inside <laughs> now. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'll do I'll do folklore. All right, nice. For me, but sure. Folklore sounds more like my bag. Um, you said a plus 20? Plus 20. So with a goal of 60, I've rolled a 71. Okay. Yeah, you're not and sure. You're Unclear. Unclear. How are his humors? <laughs> uh not great it looks like probably lived a very rough life recently uh is uh, is a refugee from the war right as anya had said um so um and anya will say uh you know edgar didn't really have anyone in town mostly lived alone it's one of the reasons i'm wondering is his murder connected because many of the people who have gone missing, some of them didn't have anyone. It's just, uh, I don't know. The, you know, th three refugees went missing the week before this one shows up dead. Uh, someone seems to be targeting them, but then not everybody who's gone missing is a refugee for poor father Pierre. He died and he's not a refugee. So I just, I don't know what's related. I don't know what isn't. Uh, with his gallbladder in my hand, I'm going to like fully turn and face <gasps> Anya. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> uh, <sighs> and, and just was there anyone who would have wanted to hurt him? I don't. Or know. was he just an old man who kills an old man? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. Yes, I, I, I can't think of anyone. Uh, you know, he was found down by the the old drawbridge. Uh, sometimes he liked to go there to feed the strays. Under the drawbridge? Yeah. Under the drawbridge. Um, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll sort of drop the gallbladder back in and go, well, I'm stumped. <laughs> Has there been anyone that's like really anti-refugee here or any no. organization that's been like not about them no no we're very welcoming uh, here uh, usually there's plenty of work to go around unloading boats uh, here at the docks um you know they the and 
they always seem grateful for a place to come stay. It's it's win win. Great. Well, maybe we should <laughs> check out underneath the the drawbridge on our way across town. That's true. We could also stop by the docks because a uh, lander used to work on the docks. So do you mind if I take some of this with me? If the strays haven't been fed, we can probably kill two birds with one stone. Um, That's what he would have wanted. <laughs> I believe they call that organ donation. Anya will uh, just like give a... You know when someone's nodding but also shaking their head at the same time? That's exactly <laughs> what's happening here. Un unclear what to do in this situation. I... I e uh, you do whatever you need to do. Um, and they will sit down at their desk and start doing paperwork. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut out the liver because mm -hmm. it's good for you. Um, and then I'll stitch him back up because no one deserves to be buried like that. So sure. Sure. Of course. Of course. Okay, great. So and try not to, to lose anything of Giles's inside while we're working. <laughs> I mean, there's. I've just been dropping ashes all over this body. As I've just, <laughs> ashes now. just, yeah, no, I, I got you, Doc. Come on, yeah, roll, roll around for it. Like a hospital in the fifties. <laughs> um. So, uh, while you are uh s stitching up and settling things up over there, um, Black Eden and the Professor. Reach the chapter house. Yeah. Of well, before Mark. we even get there, I want to talk to Black Eden because, oh, okay, uh, I'm not much of a talker, right? So, you, I think, should take the lead on the conversation. And if anything goes awry, and you need me to start hitting things, just say "swing away," right? Swing away. That's that's the the magic phrase. And then I'm going to be swinging away. Feels vaguely familiar, like a film I didn't bother finishing. Um, really? Oh, it was great. Sorry, swing away. But I'm not using a baseball bat. I'm using my hands. Oh, right. Okay. That seems somehow more dangerous, actually. Um, yes, of course. I would love to uh, take the lead on chatting with the <laughs> religious folk. Um, is there any indication? I do see that there is a, a, a West Shore alley indicated on the map. Do Would we know as people that that is like a significant area or? So that is the alley where Father Pierre's body was. Yeah. Which like as a player, I can kind of discern that. But would Black Eden sure. I have any So idea? Anya... Uh, Anya told you that yeah, I'm sure there's not just one alley. Yeah, he was found in the alley, so probably would have pointed out that is the significant alley, mm -hmm. right? That it's yeah. you know at this cross street, um, right? And so you would have that information. Awfully close to the pub, isn't it? For a religious man. I mean, anyway, I'm sure it's unrelated. Drink after mass, <laughs> right? That's a but yeah, before do. we get to the chapter house, uh, could we take like a cursory glance of that area? Sure. Is that fine? Yeah. Or yeah, let us scrutinize. You can go up. wherever you want. Uh, what's the What's the cursory glance? Is scrutinized just for looking at people, or also for yeah things? Uh, scrutinize can be looking at things. Awareness is often looking at things Awareness. as well. Awareness. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to, you say so you want to like swing by the alley and just poke your head in, basically? Yeah, just sort of like take a look around. Stand um, out I, or yeah. Uh, I would like specifically to look for anything that's been covered up. Mm. Sure. Well, Not you can so much left in the open, but like, yeah. Maybe like, like, um, scuffed dirt to hide a footprint or something like that. I like it. Well, you can see that they're like like the the obvious things about this alley are modest homes of wood and stone are lining the street. Smells like rotting food and dirty rags um, because there is a heap of garbage uh, off to one side in the alley. You can also see like this no roll required fresh bloodstains on the ground. Um, okay. 
someone was murdered here, as you know. Mm. Um, and so those are the things that you can immediately tell. How long uh, ago was this morning? Was Father Pierre this morning? Yeah, this morning. Yeah. Okay. Was found this so, morning. so are people like just oh. looking around? Do we notice if people are like avoiding the alley or anything like that, or? Is there anything to like keep people from going into the alley? This was this morning, so yeah, it doesn't. I mean, again, Anya is the only uh, person uh, who's right. who's like on the case, and so there's no you know barriers, no crime scene tape yeah. or anything like that. Are there? Has anybody like, you know, how people talk? Like, has anybody like come into the area yeah. to like look at the say, alley and be like looky loose rubber next to like looking at the yeah. blood and poking it with a stick or something yeah good question so why don't you all tell us to roll whenever an yeah. awareness <laughs> test for okay. me yeah. i do have i have a um skill rank in awareness so i I'm do not beating this, but i'm beating a 60 i have succeeded so they, with a 32 under my 40 i um, have failed oh. so with an 82 Oh, I see. Well, well <laughs> luckily you're you're with the professor. Uh and you can tell professor that the heap is it's moving. Disgusting here. The heap. Something is under the the heap and moving. Something you is under like the heap garbage and moving. Heap? Ooh, yeah. don't touch that. Nope, I'm gonna. I walk over and grab oh, the Oh, don't don't put your hands When on you that. walk into the alley, a man comes out of the heap. You filthy. You there. What are you and doing? I'm a deputy. Wide-eyed starts to run away. Oh, I'm going to chase him. You run, I'm going to chase. <sighs> All right. Black Do Eden. You have to chase him. What are him? you doing? Um, I don't know. He seems like some sort of vagabond that's just sleeping somewhere in the alley. That's fine. Um, I'm going to let uh, my much more athletic companion chase him. And I would like to just go ahead and continue looking around the alley. Uh, I failed dramatically my first round. Um, so I guess just uh, if there's anybody around that I can talk to. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we will we'll get to you in a second, Black mm -hmm. Eden. Um, we are currently in a chase. Zweihander has rules for chases. A chase. Um, and so, Rudy, the way this works is... Uh, I roll a d10 okay. and add uh, in a uh, add the speed of this um, person who is running away from you, fleeing, covered in garbage, man, rather filthy looking, um, it, and uh, and to generate a value, which is how far ahead they are. Okay. Then you roll a d10 and add your speed. If you manage to catch up. With your number, you can make an attempt to try to grab them. You can also do anything else you want. You can, you know, uh, shout threatening things. Swing you away. could oh, gotcha. uh, f fire a, a ranged weapon. You could do any sort of thing that you want. Now, hmm. I'm not saying you have to do any of those things. No. Um, but uh, but if you're giving chase, we'll start there. So I will. Sure. He uh, has a seven. Gets added to his D10. Uh, this is so I rolled a three. Correct. What's up? This is movement. The, this, this is movement. Speed, per se. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, I rolled a three and I add seven, which is his movement. Okay. So I got a 10. Okay. So if you beat a 10, you can catch up to Great. him. Great. I'm also going to yell, stop that man in the name of the law, uh, <laughs> as I chase him. Okay. I have rolled a seven plus my speed of seven is a 14. So, all right. Then I so, said, oh, never mind. As I grab him by you, the, uh, so you can try to grab him by making an athletics test. Ha ha! That like. is the best thing I am at. So, I will do do this. I have rolled okay. a night uh, uh, ninety one. I am going to use one of our fortune points, and I'm going to re-roll that ninety one okay. to make a. God huh? damn! I still fail. I still failed. That's okay. That just means the uh, the, the game is continues. afoot. Yes, okay. The chase I mean. continues. But I'm, like, uh, right on top of him. And I'm still yelling, grab him! I mean, I assume there's people yeah. in the area. And, uh, uh, there are people. Make a leadership test. I'm going to invoke see if you uh, can get people Anya's to name. Like, uh, the constable has deputized me officially. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a member of the... I'll give you a, I'll give you a plus 20 for that. Plus 20. All right, cool. 
So I'm rolling under 60. I've rolled 72. So I <laughs> fail once again. The people are indifferent. The people are shocked oh, okay. at what is is going on. They're like, huh? huh? They're confused. The people um, are helping him. They're like yeah. tripping apple Alan... carts in yes. front of you. It's uh, like Aladdin. <laughs> right. Riff, raff. Um, okay. So I rolled again for a new uh, chase value. Yep. I got a 11 this time. Charlie. Okay. I rolled a 14 again. So I'm going right. to make and, another athletics try test. And grab him again. Uh. <laughs> I've rolled zero zero. So oh, I okay. win automatically. What does this, does this mean? Something. Special? So zero zero is a hundred. Um, oh, you're right. Which is I don't a critical failure. I explode, right? I believe. Like I just blow. Uh, so something bad happens, which I think what we'll <laughs> yeah, say. Lightning just comes can you down. Use, you, a I, boulder I falls assume on you, you can't use a fortune point on a crit fail. You cannot use a fortune Jafar point. Jafar sends him into the cave of wonders, there, never yeah. to return. <laughs> That's right. Gone forever. Um, so what we'll say is that you trip during this chase, which means that you only get to add half your pursuit, half your movement to the next chase. Okay. Could have been way worse, so I will accept it. Okay. Um, uh, and I rolled a one, so I got an eight. <laughs> okay. I rolled. Total. I rolled a nine, so my bonus doesn't even matter. But it doesn't even matter. All right. Once again, I'm gonna grab. All Will right. this be the time? Nope, 74. Uh, man, love these percentile dice games. Back in my Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use fortune again. I'm Go using all it. our fortune to chase a random man, and I have failed yet again with a 70. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you can make, if you're still shouting, you can also make a yell for, you can make another roll. To I'm see still yelling. Help. I'm now panting as well. This is going <laughs> far longer. I'm a man who, who's a sprinter not a marathoner. So sure. Of um, course. Do I still have that bonus or? Uh, yeah. Okay. I rolled a six. So, Hey, there you go. So you do find that people converge upon this individual, um, you see a woman uh, with a sack of potatoes hits this individual in oh. the face and they fall uh, and says, uh, she says, what the hell is wrong with you, Maro, running from the authorities? Yeah, Maro, what the hell's wrong with you? <clears throat> and I'm going to grab him by the scruff of his collar and just literally lift him into the air while trying not to, like, double over. And how would you get so fast? <laughs> and he says, no, 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 sir. I promise it, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I just heard the murder in the alley, but I didn't do it. Uh, and I think that's where we'll stop Okay. Uh, for this evening. Perfect. So um, join us next week uh, when we will be talking about more cool Zweihander stuff and picking up this adventure with our party split in three different places now. <laughs> uh, very exciting. Uh, but before we go, why don't we quickly go around the table, let people know where they can find you. So, Rudy, where can people find you? Oh, hey, you can find me on Twitter at Rudy Basso. Uh, you can listen to the podcast I produce called Dames and Dragons at damesanddragons.com. On Mondays, for the rest of February, I will be on the Cobalt Press Twitch channel playing Prepared from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hey, if you like food in Dungeons & Dragons, check out Arcadia Issue 11, where you can read my article on how to harvest the monsters you kill and cook them into ver various delicious recipes for bonuses. Very fun. So a system Thank you can you. just plug into your game at any time. Good times. Thanks for that Arcadia plug. And also, uh, I do love that you pronounce prepared in such a way that you can hear the exclamation point in the title. That was great. Prepared. <laughs> uh, TK, where can people find you? Hello, it's me. It's TK. Um, I'm going to be honest. When James said the party split in three ways, my immediate uh, reaction was, <laughs> I'll be safe. I'm hanging out in this alley. Um, <laughs> so if I die, that's on James. Uh, everybody feel free to blame him. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, TK Joins the Fray. Um, you can email me at Rudy Basso's email, and please be sure to uh, 
required all of these delightful mouth sounds oh, for him. You're, That's you his are a favorite. You are a monster. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh. You can cut that. It's fine. Or don't. Bleep it. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's me. Diana, where can people find you? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Diana D'Amico. You can find me at D'Amico Diana on Twitter. Um, you can also just find me by searching through all of TK's horror prompts because I pretty much respond to all of them. Um <laughs> Yeah, you can catch me on my channel, Bard and Barbarian, that I run with my husband. Uh, we do Kickstarter reviews, and then next week we're kicking off a Call of Cthulhu game, um, a four-part series inspired by Lock and Key uh, that'll be raising money for Jasper's game day. So you can catch that uh, beginning next week. And yeah, go watch The Nightlife on the Renegade Games channel, because that's going to be coming back soon, too, along with other surprises and just all kinds of cool stuff. That is excellent. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. And Sean, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me in the greater Atlanta, Georgia area, um, if you want to physically try to find me. Or if you want to find me online, uh, at like, Sean Like, where's Baldo style? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just go to Atlanta. Come to Atlanta. <laughs> And then try to figure out where I'm at. Um, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah. Twitter, at Sean Banerjee. Um, everything else of mine, uh, SeanBanerjee.com. Um, if you don't know how to spell Banerjee, it's on the screen. There I don't you know go. What to tell you. Um, I think that answers your question. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm James Intracasso. You can find me at James Intracasso. Remember to go check out... Uh, the Zweihander starter set Kickstarter. There is lots of awesome stuff for you to uh, check out there uh, and uh, join me and Rudy because we're going to talk about it right now. Oh. Uh, hey, everybody. My name oh. is James Intercasso. Oh, I'm back. Oh, uh, no. Welcome. It's restarted. Okay, we're good. Hello. <laughs> 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 Got to turn off loop in the future. All right. Hey, <laughs> we're back. Hey. hey. Uh, well, James. How about that first session? It had it Ooh. all. A chase, fiery murder, a duck. <laughs> I mean, what more can you ask for in a normal Zweihander game? Am I right? <laughs> That's right. All of those things uh, you can expect to see uh, in the starter set. Fiery murder. Um, but ducks, I, I mean, I think, I don't want to give away too much. But there may be another duck. In Whoa! Your yeah, how about yeah, that? Exactly. <laughs> that How's that exciting. for a tease? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this was fantastic. Again, uh, all of the players are links. I put the links in chat to follow them on Twitter. Please give them a follow. They deserve it. They have earned it. Along with a link to the Kickstarter launch pre-launch page, I should say. Uh, yes. The launch is when, James? It's been announced. So right? that's a great question because it also leads into when our next stream oh. is. So this coming Monday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Valentine's you remember. Day. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, it will be, uh, that's when the Kickstarter will be launching. Mm. Um, but if you go sign up, you'll get an email. So yep. uh, you'll you'll automatically be reminded. You'll, you'll get a reminder, which is really cool. Um, but uh, yes, Valentine's Day, which also then that evening, same bat time, <gasps> 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, uh, Rudy and I will be back here chatting it up and we'll have the next episode of, uh, of this actual play ready to go for you. So you can uncover more of the secrets of Swansea mm. with us uh, Monday at uh, 8 p.m. And then we will be uh, the next two Mondays after Valentine's Day, the 21st and the 28th yep. of this month, we will be here with you uh, d with an episode of the live play uh, every Monday after that. So, Same duck exciting. channel, different duck time. Next week, it'll be Monday, not Tuesday. Uh, right. For, yes. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Launching on, this, so it'll this still be Tuesday, 8 p.m., but, yes. but, but yeah. We'll still be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but uh, mm -hmm. it'll be Mondays. And you should really back... The Zweihander starter kit, instead of getting a, a chocolates or supporting big greeting card, as I call it, who are the, of course, everyone knows they're behind Valentine's Day. You That's know, right. Hallmarks, your, what are the greeting card companies out there? I don't even know. 
uh, your shoe shoe box. Except shoe box? I think that's a is Hallmark that a sub brand? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, should just be called Big Hallmark. My big greeting card. Well, no one says yeah. big greeting card. But anyway, uh, yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, there's going to be lots of goodies within the starter kit. More details on that when it goes live next week. Uh, and we'll be sure to be talking about all that stuff on the stream. I'm very excited to discuss yeah. all the fun things that are going to be inside that box. Um, but for now, I mean, James, how did you think the session went? First session, GM, <laughs> first time, you know, post play testing. I assume that you've that you've run it. How did you feel? Yes, yeah. So this is uh, play testers have run the adventure before, mm-hmm. but it's the first time I've actually ever gotten a chance to run it. Uh, and I, I honestly had a blast. Like oh, I, great. Um, uh, yeah, I when I went to bed last night, it was like that feeling of being so hyped up after a really great game. Um, and so, uh, I was excited. I, it seemed like we all had a lot of fun together and I'm like super jazzed to play again. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I had a, I had a blast. Uh, this cast is fun. They are hilarious and we are just starting to get into it. Um, things are going to get uh you know um more grim Ooh. more perilous more mm. horror more fantasy i was gonna say how did uh, you think our pacing uh, was i know we kind of you know oh, as yeah. with any first session you kind of you know dawdle and have fun and talk to each other but do you think we're making good progress as far as the adventure is concerned yes absolutely yeah good. yeah i i think I'm we will definitely hit the end of this thing no problem by um by the exciting conclusion on the 28th uh so yeah i am uh i think uh i think it's great hey are you having fun i'm having so much fun i'm having so much fun i'm yeah i'm loving i got my hat got my you don't really see i'm wearing a tie because i'm a professor and i have boxing hand wraps or just like but i can't find them i'm gonna try and have them for the next session so everyone can see how cool i look yeah um yeah uh yeah are you looking forward to your title match it's I hope really so. What a question. what a James, you son of a gun, man! Did you throw <laughs> me for a loop? I'm like, this is the primary quest giver of this camp of this session, and I'm, I'm they're my enemy. I was ready to walk away right there, just walk away. Like I can't talk to you. We can't be friends. Yeah, you're my yeah, opponent. It's true. It's like at that that you know the weigh in that yeah. they oh, they I have know. before. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just that's the, what it felt like. Yeah, that sort of tension. Down. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> excuse me all right well i think that's gonna do it then for tonight uh this was really fun and yeah we we're gonna have to get more into the the weeds about crossbow bolt economy yes and yeah, how much I mean, I, how, how many how many crossbow bolts to buy a a tankard of ale is my question if we have to break the crossbow bolt down i think pieces. it's actually how many how many ank- how many tankards of ale to buy a crossbow bolt so okay. it's really a, a tankard of ale economy oh my we're gonna get down to the ourselves. the real nitty-gritty of yeah. the lowest possible uh currency exchange rate yeah denomination <laughs> of exchange of currency by the end of yeah. the campaign i i have to say i am going to be sad if nobody buys a bucket of eels at any point or that a keg was of eels an off stream conversation eels. yeah where yep, there was a yep, lot yeah. of talk about well, how much would a keg of ale cost yeah. thank so, you tk for that by the way there there is also uh i i just need to give this shout out while you are here my friend oh. Rudy um, is doing uh, the tech for this oh. uh, and also uh, edited the video that you saw this evening. So many, many thanks to you, my friend, oh, uh, because uh, you're making the magic happen yeah. and you're making the magic look like magic. <laughs> so because there's a there was a lot of eel talk and other things uh, that <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you making it fun and tight for the audience. Ah, No problem. It's my pleasure. I'm happy to be able to work with such uh, a great person like you and a great company like uh, the people making this game. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And big thanks to Andrews McMeal yeah, and Andrews McMeal, to uh, Daniel Dude Fox. You're there uh, ch- chatting away yes. in the chat. So uh, thank you very much for, for this and uh, and to the, you know, everybody over at uh, Zv- twitch.tv slash Zweihander RPG yes. for making this happen. And to answer Tamarathon's question, we have no Zweihander wielder, wielders in this party, but it's definitely in there if you pick it up and it is a doozy. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it is definitely, it is a, 
you know, it, you can't have the game's titular weapon not be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and who knows? The, uh, these folks may come across as Vihander yet, and, uh, and perhaps someone else will be wielding it. We shall see. We shall see. All right. So that's going to do it for today's stream. We'll be back again on Monday the 14th from 8 o'clock to when we finish, which should be around 10.30ish probably. So thank you so much, everyone, again for watching. Thank you so much, James. Uh, follow everybody who was in the game on Twitter and have a wonderful night. Goodbye. Mm. Bye. Thank you.